This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. I am pretty sure that the result of this test will surprise you. The original Z6, the only issue I ever had with it was the autofocus and how it would focus on things that I just didn't want to focus on. Either it would back focus or it would focus on something in the foreground when there's clearly a person right in front of me. But the Nikon Z6 II has improved. But how does it compare to the big boys, the Canons and the Sonys? The first test was meant to show how the cameras respond to an object coming in between the model and the lens. Before you even have pressed the shutter, each camera is already looking for a face. One thing that I like about the Nikon Z6 II, however, is when you have pressed the shutter and activate the autofocus, you can see that the camera grabs focus on the light pole, but then the moment the model comes back into view, the Z6 II will automatically look for her face again while never having to release the shutter button. The Canon R5 locks onto her eye like white on rice, even before you do anything. But once you have pressed the shutter and the light pole gets in the way, it sticks to it. When I continue to half press the shutter button and the light pole wasn't in the frame anymore, it still didn't want to focus on her and grab the building behind her until I let go and reacquired focus. Same with the Sony, it would grab onto the light pole and not look for the model anymore until I let go of the shutter and half pressed it again. Not a big deal, just showing you how each camera would handle this situation. One of my biggest issues with the original Z6 was how it would focus on foreground objects when I'm trying to shoot a portrait using auto area AF. So I shot right up next to this concrete railing, defocused the lens, and I wanted to see what the camera would decide to focus on first. The Nikon Z6 II did an amazing job finding the face despite all the distractions in the scene. The Canon R5 was the snappiest and the fastest of all three cameras. It didn't hesitate not even for a split second, unlike how the Nikon Z6 II did. The Sony a7 III, to my surprise, was the one that wanted to focus on the railing every time before her face. I also had the a7S III in my bag that has the latest Sony AF technology, and it did the same thing. I'm mainly a Sony shooter, and I can tell you that this is usually a non-issue anytime I'm using any of these cameras. The next test was to see how good each camera would track the model when photographing through leaves and through bushes. All three cameras performed great in this test. So for those who are wondering, I was supposed to be using the Sony a7S III for this comparison since it has the latest autofocus tech that Sony has to offer, but I forgot that it required a full HDMI cord. I used the Sony a7 III instead because it still holds its own in 2020, and this test was meant to be focused on the performance of the Z6 II anyways. Now this is the most telling from all the tests. I purposely told the model to stand farther away to see if the Nikon would want to focus on the bushes on the right in the foreground. And what I learned was how fast the Nikon Z6 II loses track of her as I back up. I switched to single AF to see if it would do a better job, but nope, it couldn't find her anymore. The subject would have to be relatively large in the frame to recognize them with the Z6 II. With the Canon R5, I had to back up a decent amount for the camera to lose track of the subject and then start focusing on surrounding bushes. The Sony performed the best and I was able to step back even farther than the Canon before the Sony lost her. Going along the same lines, I wanted to see how fast each camera would find her as she walked towards the camera. The Sony was the fastest to find her, then it was the Canon, and then it was the Nikon. So I know this isn't the perfect autofocusing test. I didn't test out any of the other modes, but at the end of the day, I only ever had problem with one and that was auto area AF on the Nikon Z6. The camera's ability to, to do the thinking and determine what the subject is, that was my issue. And the Z6 II passed.
past. The honest truth is that I thought the Z6 II would fail this test, where I defocused the lens and let the camera quickly decide what to focus on. But nope, through all the distractions. And considering how small the subject was here, it nailed it every time. Now, the only issue that I came across with the Z6 II was when the person starts to shrink in the frame, the camera loses them. Easy, easy fixes. You map your subject tracking to FN1, right here, this button. It takes a millisecond to press it. A white box is gonna pop up in the center of the viewfinder. Half press your shutter, you lock onto the person, and then you're able to move your camera around and you're gonna just keep track on them. Or you could do it the old fashioned way and just use an autofocusing box and use the joysticks that, that is provided on the camera and just do it the old school way and just move your autofocus box around. Easy solutions. I know that I sound like I want the camera to do everything for me, but that's it's just not the point that I'm trying to make. When the camera can reliably find the subject in your picture, that allows you to focus on other things like your composition. Hey, is there a stray hair? What's going on here? What's going on there? You can just focus on getting your photo, your composition, it allows, it unlocks more creativity where you can just move around and not have to fiddle with things. It speeds up the process. There are many benefits to having reliable, reliable autofocus, especially eye autofocus and face tracking. Okay, so let's get down to business. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. And of all times, this is something that everyone can benefit from right now. Keeping your data encrypted and away from those weirdos and hackers is more important than ever because every almost everyone is working from home. Using a VPN is the safest way to browse the web and protect your identity. Also, hey, did you want to stream that one TV show that's not on Netflix anymore in your country? Private internet access has over 10,000 internet servers in over 70 countries, which means that you can do things like unblock that content from streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, or even Hulu. Private internet access is available on all platforms. It has a strict no logs policy. You can use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. So that means everyone in your home and you will get a 30 day money back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> if you use my link, you'll be able to get complete digital privacy for you and your family, whoever, for less than $3 a month and three extra months for free. The link will be down below.